Let's see how this goes. I got uh, I got a three, Jeremy. A whole whole three. All uh, right. Well, mark it. Mark, mark, mark one XP. Um, <laughs> and I know how the next session's gonna start. Oh fuck me. <clears throat> so sorry. I'm really not. Sharing a moment of being like, well, that sucked. I would like to threaten the rock. Yeah, this is all my fault. Just as a reminder, uh, we are excluding content, meaning it's just not part of the game on camera or off. Institutionalized bigotry, violence against people for being queer, the idea that torture works, the maggot. So veiled content, torture, sex scenes, non-consensual sex, and special handling, uh, no active threats of sexual violence to anyone, okay as a backstory. Queerness, polyamory, etc., is generally well-known and socially accepted, at least not shocking and slow down and be very careful when, when we have any violence towards children and pets. If anyone notices that we're ignoring that, call timeout. If you wanna add something to this or just talk about something, call timeout and then we'll discuss. Quick check-in on wishes from last time. Kat was basically saying, I wanna use my moves, which mm. I think that will not be hard to hit this time. <laughs> Uh, Luke wants to see the emotion sensing power of the lidless eye on the screen. Oh, Hobbs, nothing specific. Just want to see where this is going. Just kind of lingering from last time as a reminder to myself, make sure to try and put Karina's fears front and center. And Luke, you had mentioned on the first session that you were still working on Alex's voice. Is that something you're feeling better about? Yeah, I'm feeling better about that. All right. And as far as drives go, Alex, is it still charity? I think it is still charity for now. Eilwyn, I'm guessing it's still secrecy, right? That's correct, yeah. And Karina, I know you talked about changing it. Is bravery still the right one for you? I think that works totally fine for now. Last thing before we get going, Karina, your destiny move. Yes. So when you start a session, roll plus nothing. So that is a one and a two. <laughs> so on a six minus, mark XP. Hey. <clears throat> What new nightmare do you have and how do your fears play into them? She literally has a nightmare about the staff. She can tell that it's watching her and she can tell that it's malicious, like it's planning something awful. She decides right then and there that she's not just going to throw it away. She's going to pick it up and she's going to destroy it this time. And Eilwyn can just be mad at her. She wouldn't be the first person and she won't be the last. She goes to pick it up and it starts screaming and she can't drop it she can't put it down it's just this horrible screaming then she starts to realize it's in her head and it's screaming at her and it's getting louder and louder and she can't think and she can't drown it out she knows something terrible is about to happen and then she wakes up okay i'm with you on everything up until the you wake up part oh no because uh, i got another move that i get to layer on top of this Eilwyn, you're on watch when Karina starts groaning and twitching and moaning in her sleep. To add to it, the rain that was threatening all day has started to hit you guys. Like it's not pouring, but it's like you're kind of stuck outside in a, in a drizzle and the campfire is starting to fizzle and fissure. Do you do anything when you notice Karina like having what you can only assume is a nightmare? I probably nudge her a bit to try and wake her up with the staff. <laughs> are you like prodding her with the base of it or are you actually like prodding her with the eye itself? I probably start with the base and it doesn't wake her up and then I'm like, okay. So I'm going to say that like when you tap her with the actual eye, like she does, uh -huh. like there's a bit of a whimper and then she does actually uh -huh. like quiet down and go still. Everything must be fine now. Yeah. Everything must be fine. Everything's fine. We're uh, all fine here. You know, once that kind of passes, you're you're outside in the rain. Have you ever had to like be outside in this kind of a situation? Oh gods, no. All right. <laughs> no, this is gross. Why are we not? Uh, 
and like she's on watch Mm -hmm. so she's not you know complaining to anyone she knows that like this is her role she's got to do the protecting and this is just like what's expected so she's gonna do it but she's gonna complain the entire time at least to herself because this sucks (laughs) Are you up and walking around or are you like pacing? I'm sure. I think maybe like a couple of times the markings on the stone sort of like catch your eye, right? It's a good distraction. Yeah. We get a little like cut of Eilwyn standing in the rain, like, you know, keeping a good distance because you're smart enough to not like fuck around with this stuff. All right. We cut back into Karina's nightmares. Like what I'm actually picturing it as is like when you grab the staff, it's very much like the bit in the two towers when Pippin grabs the Palantir. Like exactly. The eyes just boring into your soul and you just like trying to let go of it and you can't let go of it, right? Like you're just like, Arr! and the thing is just like the eye is turning from that kind of weird green color that it has. It's starting to raise up and get brighter and almost become like a sun in the sky. Flames are starting to kind of like crackle and ripple out from the sides of it. And the screaming is just getting like, you almost feel like your ears are bleeding and collapsing. And then sort of just like cutting out through it is this run, 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 run. And suddenly you're able to let go of it. That whispering, it's not coming from the eye. It's something telling you, you need to fucking run. Go, go, go. Now's your chance. What do you do? Am I still in the dream? I don't think Karina necessarily is aware that she is at this point. No, yeah, for sure. Karina's having a bad day. It's like a self-soothing thing. She grabs the charm at her neck that Caradwen gave her. She grabs automatically for it because it's something like she rubs it when she's anxious or when she's like ruminating over something, almost like a worry stone. I guess the question is, is it there or not? Oh, that's an interesting question. Can you remind me what the charm is? Um, I never said, which is why you can't remember. I think it's a bit of carven stone that's just sort of cleverly meant to look like um, a snake twisting around on itself. And Caradwen said that it's supposed to be a symbol of uh, new beginnings, like a snake shedding its skin. Cool. All right. You hear this voice that says, like, telling you to run, like, kind of cutting through the screaming. And you like grab at that charm. Grab for it. it. Yeah. yeah. And you're seeing it. Not to see if it's there. It's not even like a conscious, it's not like a reality check thing. Uh, okay. It's just instinctive. Like it's the first thing she reaches for when she's scared and anxious. Yeah. You grab for it and you're like, shit, it's not there. As soon as you kind of like have that realization, the voice shifts is like, behind you, it's there, it's there. So I think Karina like whips around to see if there's something behind her. Somehow you realize that you're on a, a uh, uh, like in the forest again. Oh. Like hanging from what, like a bare tree branch. Mm-hmm. You just sort of like see glinting in that like pale burning green light. You see mm-hmm. the, the, the char, the, like the stone just kind of glinting. Hmm. What do you do? Because Karina has had so many like weird fucked up semi-prophetic dreams over the years like I think she has some practice at being like oh fuck it's a dream right <laughs> just, I think that shift like gives her just a moment of lucidity of being like oh fuck I'm dreaming no no I think that's perfect um once you that 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 wedge kind of like pops into your brain what do you do about it she probably tries to wake up just like snap herself out and be like oh wake up but I, I don't know if that actually works or not. Like, especially if, like, if, as the player, if there's something else that's trying to, like, kind of keep her in this dream state. I think that's, like, a legitimate attempt, right? We basically yeah. just, like, try to take command of your mind and, like, right. wake yourself up. This sounds yeah. absolutely like defying danger with wisdom to me. Okay, I'm pretty sure my whiz is either negative one or zero. <laughs> For now, my stats are trash. Um, it's just a question of which ones are the worst trash. Okay, just zero. That's average. So uh, five and a three, so an eight. All right, so a cost, a consequence, a lesser result, or a choice between them. Um, oh, okay, I think I've got it. So we're going to shift the spotlight on this um, <clears throat> and kind of like pull out and, and go back to Eilwyn. Um, so Eilwyn, it's drizzling and and like kind of a light rain. It's kind of hard to hear, right? Everything that's going on. Mm -hmm. Um, 
and you're you know like you're you're thinking about what's going on there and and it's hard to see this stuff in the rain and the you know it's overcast so there's not like a lot of light coming through and you're looking at the like do i use this stuff or oh wait no i can't really read when i use it but they're but carved then, right no yeah okay. you're right they'd probably be carved right they're 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 petroglyphs yeah it means that i can see them with the staff because i can oh, do shapes oh i gotcha okay well before you get to that point right. um like maybe you're thinking about doing that something cuts through the rain and it just makes you like, like, oh, you know what? It's a pop on the um, the campfire, just yep. from like water yep. hitting a fire. Mm -hmm. And you know, you're not that used to that sort of thing. So it makes you like jerk around. You see Karina right on the edge, standing there. And then like, right as you see it, she jerks. And Karina, you like come to right on the lip here ah. and you're like ah! flailing a little bit for whatever reason the dog is still asleep yeah uh you the dog. <laughs> oh he's like curled right up against the fire right to aisle when you see karina kind of like flailing and windmilling a little bit what do you do her instinct would just be to dash over there as fast as she could to try and like grab a handful of cloak and pull Karina back. Okay. Like, uh, this is not great. <laughs> unless there's <laughs> unless there's like something else on this rocky outcropping that she could use, but I really don't think there is. I can't really think of anything. So you're gonna rush towards her. If she's and... like windmilling off the edge, she needs to get pulled back. Yeah. All right, so you're doing that. Karina, what's your response to like, whoa, fuck, like you're uh, teetering on the edge? Well, what do you string do? of expletives, first of all, like a string of like OC curse words. And then I think she tries to like scramble backwards. Like she just tries to get away from the edge. Kind of fling yourself back. Like stagger backwards. Eilwyn is definitely going to be aiding on this. Okay. And you're definitely defying danger. Right? Like, there's all sorts of danger here. But I'm just trying to think what the right stat is. It's a dex. Yeah, yeah I you're right. You're else. right. Thinking quickly. It's not yeah. smart. It's just bleh. Yeah, yeah, it's a reflex type thing. You're right. Yep. So with dex. And so, uh, I, I will eating. roll one. What did you get? Hooray! That makes it a seven. <laughs> Wait, do I get to mark XP for that? When another I... PC rescues you from danger? Yeah. Yes. I love that move. I'm going to give you a choice between a cost or a complication. This is not really a decision that Karina is making. This is a decision I'm going to offer to Kat. We can either say that, yeah, you like flail backwards and Eilwyn gets there and like pulls you back, but you end up landing in the fire and burning yourself. Not okay. like, you know, horribly, but like you're going to take some damage and it's going to hurt. Or we can say that as you slip, as you try and go, mm -hmm. and what ends up happening is I'll win like reaches out with the staff and you have to mm. grab on the staff in order to get pulled up. Let's do that second one because I think it's more interesting. Okay. Also because Karina fucking hates it. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, uh, uh, paint this scene for us. So Eilwyn is like booking it as you're windmilling on the edge and realizes she's not going to get there in time. And so like kind of skids out and re extends her reach with the staff. Okay. Um, so you've got this, you know, tiny kid coming at you with the staff and like trying to hook like your arm or something and okay. mm -hmm. like using it basically just as a reach extender and not really thinking about it. Okay. Can I make a suggestion uh, that Eilwyn would yes. probably think of is you're very small, so get low. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, no, right. that's that's how I was picturing it. Sorry. Okay. Oh no. no All you wrong. tall people. <laughs> <laughs> how cool. else do you slide? I don't know. Karina, when given the choice between grab this fucking staff and fall to my death, chooses to like just instinctively grab for the staff and try to. Try to do it in a way that she's not going to yank Eilwyn off the edge with her too. If you want to make it particularly dramatic, you might actually slip and it's just like holding on to that thing that gives you enough. Oh, I love to, it. Yes, to, like, let's do that. Does Alex wake up with, with this commotion? The sound of a Ligosi curse 
for a very long time was not a safe thing for Alex to sleep through because it meant like, it meant violence in the camp. And so I think, yeah, like as soon as they hear that, they wake up. There is no process of waking up for Alex. Like their eyes snap open and they are awake with no like intermediate period at all. And so I think, I think part of how uh, Eilwyn is able to like support Corinna's weight Mm-hmm. is that Alex just like immediately like sits up and like two big hands close around like the back of Eilwyn's clothes and like Love anchor it. her in place. Proposal? Hmm? Alex yeah. just sits on her. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, right, you're not going anywhere and I'm sure as hell not going anywhere. <laughs> I love it. Is there still a knife in Alex's hand when, 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 you, uh, when, you, when you hook her? <sighs> There is a hand ready to do violence before they like turn it into a hug. Awesome. All right. Uh, so it. from there, you know, like there's a few tense moments of just like, ah, 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 right. Eventually, Alex is able to get like a hand down to Karina and pull her up, and everything's fine. But now that you are awake, Karina, you just find yourself staring at that fucking rock. Maybe it's just your imagination that you're hearing that little kind of sign voice from your dream coming from that rock, but that was a yep. fucking outside influence. Did um, not and, enjoy it. And and once you clamber up, like you realize, like the dog is actually whimpering as well. Like she says, "Thank you," because she's not a maniac. But as soon as she notices the dog whimpering, I think she says, "She sounds very shaken," and she says sharply, "That fucking spirit." got in my head and then she just like walks quickly over to her dog and like settles at Caradoc's side and um starts rubbing his flank to try to wake him up gently it takes a little bit of doing you mm-hmm. know eventually like he calms down a little bit and then eventually starts to like wake up he's a very good dog while she's doing that alex and and Eilwyn, are either of you doing anything so i want to investigate this further and maybe get it to fucking stop because you know i gotta protect my people um (laughs) so i want to try and figure out what exactly could placate this spirit enough to let us sleep the night i have two questions they're both like clarifying questions is this stone part of the stone that we are on maybe it's not exactly the same like single piece of fused stone but it's like a rock that has been here forever and just like the everything else eroded around it. How far down do the runes go? There's nothing on the the ground around it. Great. <laughs> I would like to threaten the rock. <laughs> okay, so what I what I'm picturing is Eilwyn sort of like looking at it and thinking and like kind of coming up with a plan. Mm-hmm. And like while she's doing that, it seems like Alex would basically just stomp over there and start yelling. Yeah, Alex just walks past. Oh yeah, no that that seems like an excellent sequence. All right. <laughs> yeah, like, so I think Eilwyn yeah. might squeak at them, but <laughs> yeah, they just like w- walk past uh, Eilwyn, like kind of clap like a reassuring hand on her shoulder as they go past and like squeeze a little, and then mm-hmm. just like step up like real close to the rock. And, like, reach out this big, calloused, scarred hand and rest it on, like, the carvings. And they talk to the rock. And they assume the spirit in the rock. Mm -hmm. What do you say? These are my people, little spirit. And you tried to fuck with them. Alwyn tells me we can't damage these runes. This rock's not that big. I can tip this rock over without breaking those runes. And then I will take the greatest pleasure in digging a hole and burying you where the light does not shine nor the wind blow and you will be trapped there forever. Now back the fuck off. This is definitely pressing or enticing. Um, Mm -hmm. (laughs) I think it has cause to resist. Uh, Jeremy, that's an 11. Nice. Your intimidation technique works beautifully. But also, uh, like, 
how do we know that, <laughs> right? Like uh, you actually sense it, right? Oh, like, like nice. if you put your hand on it and start like kind of talking at it, there's you kind of like feel a little like shift in the wind and the rain, mm. and then like a kind of a little bit of defiance. Um, and I think kind of like, as you say, like as your, as your, your shirt sort of pulls open and we see like the little Helior charms and then like just the steely bit in your, in your voice, particularly the, the, for me, it was the, uh, I will bury you. Right. And like, cause I was not expecting that. I was expecting like, I will throw you off this cliff and shatter you or something like that. It was like, oh, fuck. No, um, no, no. We're not going to set it free. Like so, when you uh, uh, threaten to bury it, uh, then you like there's a shift in the wind, and then like when you get done with your bit, like the rain's just coming straight down, and you feel like a, uh, you know, you you've talked down a gret bullies before, um, <clears throat> and that's pretty much what this feels like. Um, and that, and we're going to actually say that, like, at that is the exact moment when Karadoc, like, wakes up and uh, then, like, starts, like, lick, licking at, at Karina's face. Alex, like, turns around and smiles and, like, raises their voice um, so that Eilwyn can hear them again. And it's like, I think it's going to be all right. But I think she noticed that something changed. I think you probably noticed the body language, right? Mm. Like, I don't think you've probably ever seen Alex like put the lean on something on someone before. Mm -hmm. The only oh, other right. time maybe would be when they were holding Corinna back. Does anyone want to like do any more interactions or or do anything more at the scene? Karina would be like, so I'm not sleeping anymore tonight, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, well, I'm up. <laughs> right. Whereas I think I think Alex like just immediately goes back to their like, <laughs> right. by the fire, pulls the cloak over them, closes their eyes, and like 30 seconds so, later is asleep again. So Iowen, if if Karina does take over your watch, is there anything else that you wanted to do before going to bed? Uh no, I don't think so. Okay. Karina, do you say anything else on the matter or I think she's just kinda standoffish and seems shaken and is like, no, I'm just gonna take the rest of this watch because um, I'm not getting any more sleep tonight and leaves it at that. Eilwyn is absolutely concerned that Karina doesn't like her. Aw, which is fair, yeah. No, and, and Karina is, I think, too shaken up to even really notice that. Like, she's just real... That really fucked with her. Because, <laughs> like, she's had the bad dreams. And she's woken up to something trying to kill her, but usually they're not combined. And it's also usually not something, something else getting into your dreams in order yeah. to try and kill you. Exactly. Like, all right. Um, I think then the rest of the night passes without incident. So the next morning, um, you know, you break camp, maybe glare at the, at the rock a little bit. There's um, definitely like a beat of like, as Alex walks by, they like pause for a moment, like, like contemplate the rock. Like they're like, what if I just buried you anyway? And then like, <laughs> but then like, but then like shrug and like reach out and like give it a pat, like, you know, like I'll let you go today. And then just keep walking. As you kind of head down the bluff and then head back into the path, um, you're kind of, you know, fall, going down into a bit of a valley uh, uh, as you go. The wind is is really picking up today. Like it's 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 brisk. It's it's windy. Um, right now, the sky is actually pretty clear. Um, but it's that kind of uh, uh, like with the water for, with all the rain last night. Uh, as the wind is blowing, like there's that kind of pseudo wind that or rain that happens fairly frequently is the water is just kind of like falling from the branches. Um, and it doesn't have, you know, the, no, nothing's really uh, uh, leafed yet. So it's not that full on the happening, like, you know, like sound of wind through the, the, the branches the whole time. But there's this constant kind of creak and moan of the, uh, the, the, the branches as, as you, or the, the tree, um, the boughs as you, as you, as you head, head out. I'm definitely uh, avoiding Karina. I think 
Karina can probably tell simply because she's now looking for an opportunity to talk to Eilwyn. Mm. Um, and if it seems like Eilwyn's avoiding her, she's going to be like, oh. She's probably keeping a little bit closer to Alex. All right, let me put my relationship counselor hat on and uh, <laughs> prepare to resolve this problem. I think Alex takes advantage of the fact that like Eilwyn is like sometimes a little closer to them and like Hobbs, you tell me if this seems fair, but I imagine that like every time we get to like a little bit of a steepy bit in the valley, like remember like remembering yesterday, there's like a little bit of concern of like, oh, is Alex gonna be okay? Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. And so I think they take advantage of one of those moments. And they're just like, you know, like holding themselves up this like little slope as you watch. And then they get to the top and like, you know, like take a moment, like lean on a tree and they're like. (sighs) (sighs) And then they're like, that was. Some of what Corinna said yesterday after you had that vision was a little intense. You all right? Yeah, I, yeah, I just, I'm afraid I went too far. I'm, I was, I was just trying to help, but I, I don't know if she wanted it. She seems upset. And Alex, Alex is doing that very mean trick that therapists do where they just stay oh, quiet yeah. and let you like <laughs> keep let talking to fill the yeah. silence. They're just like nodding, like humming mm-hmm, thoughtfully, mm-hmm. like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. mm-hmm. And yeah, I think, you know, they like nod one last time and they're like, I, look, I'm not, Corinna, I can't tell you how she's feeling or what she's thinking, but it doesn't seem like she's woken up still angry if she was. And it's always better to know. It's the doubt that kills you, not the, not the truth. But look, you need some space. Stick behind me. I'll play human shield. I just, I, I don't want to, I don't want to make the trip any harder than it already is. And I'm afraid that my staff is making it harder, I guess. I mean, Corinna really, really doesn't like it. And I, I shouldn't have, have had her go get it. It might be making things a little bit harder, but like, and they look down at like the side of their chest where the scar is under their clothes. Like, you know, we've all, we all bring our own burdens along to carry. You know, Corinna's nightmares certainly didn't make last night any easier. And like, that's not her fault. No, like no one's gonna hold that against her. We're stronger together. We carry each other. We help hold each other up when it gets hard. And we brought you along. I brought you along. To be curious and to be smart and to stick your nose into places where maybe it isn't the smartest to stick it. But that's where you learn the cool stuff, right? Yeah, and like they not, you know, like exactly. And then like, I wouldn't worry about it. If it comes to it, next time I'll go get the stuff. And then I like clap you on the shoulder. Thanks, Alex. Karina is there. Uh, did you want to like fast forward and have a time, uh, like a chat with either of them? I need to just talk to Iowa about this. I think she knows exactly what Alex will tell her. Yeah. Karina. <laughs> need to yeah. be open and vulnerable <laughs> with the people you care about and use your grown up words. Uh-huh. Um. <laughs> a good time to have this chat would be when you maybe stop for lunch mm-hmm. and, you know, like to, 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 to grab a bite and, and, and whatnot. Um, and I think you find yourselves at like overlooking another stream going through the, okay. the, the uh, um, through the wood uh, kind of like, you know, like you can see how there's like two hilly areas here and there's a, a like a, a valley going through the wood. Um, Actually, you probably can't see this because I'm not sharing my screen right now. Yeah, so y'all are basically like here-ish for around lunchtime. <clears throat> and there's a little, you know, stream. It's a bit 
narrower than the stream near stone top but mm -hmm. it, you can tell like it's deeper and it's like rushing pretty quickly but okay. yeah there's like kind of a nice overlook and you know a little grassy area more muddy area right now but you know it's a decent spot to have a little sit down and a chat so i think that she waits to lunch and then she probably just does wait until alex goes out yeah. into the woods to relieve, to relieve themselves but Eilwyn didn't, like, vacate the premises or anything, right? No. She and Alex were, like, off over on one side. Um, she was definitely, like, eating with Alex and not eating with Corinna. Alex was somehow both still eating with both of you. Alex had tried to sit basically equidistant. Mm -hmm. And Eilwyn made it weird, you know. So Corinna just kind of sighs and puts her cup down and she says... Hey, Alwyn, can I talk to you for a second? Sure. So the dream I had last night, I don't think it was just a dream. I, I, saw, can... I saw that staff of yours. And I think it saw me. Oh. And I think Karina, like, who is for some reason just like excruciatingly embarrassed, um, sort of describes like as as succinctly as she can what mm -hmm. she saw and what happened because she does want Iowan to have this information um and then she says and like and she also describes how the spirit came into her dream and started whispering to her and started manipulating her but like just so you know everything that happened but I don't think that staff means any of us any good so i'm not going to tell you what to do with it because you probably know more about this kind of bullshit than i do but i just want you to be careful don't trust it please yeah i i think there's there's more to it than than just a torch you were having a bad dream squirming about and all and I sort of tried to wake you up and I nudged you with the staff and I I'm afraid that's mm. that might have been when it it jumped into your dream and I I'm I'm gonna have to I'll be careful have I'll you had careful. any dreams like that no <laughs> thank you <laughs> stop that i can't deadpan when you do that <laughs> i'm sorry oh. i think karina just sighs but decides to not press it at least for now because like alwyn is at least listening to her and not just going you don't know what you're talking about or anything like that like she can tell that alwyn is taking her seriously i also want to be clear that mm -hmm. generally speaking mm -hmm. when you try to tell Iowan how to do her job mm -hmm. she does not listen to you mm. so this yeah. is out of character for how your interactions usually go again Karina who is just like oh talking about feelings is the worst um she says hey you did good last night thanks for saving me you're welcome and then she just resolutely goes back to drinking her flask your internal Alex voice is like that still doesn't constitute an apology. <laughs> <laughs> While this beautiful uh, emotional moment is happening, I have a thing I would like to do. Oh, please. Oh. Alex has heard more than their fair share of like spooky stories about Crinwin. I don't think they've ever met one before because like they don't like they don't really go into the wood. Mm -hmm. But like they've heard more than their fair share of like tall tales and ghost stories at the the public house and i think they've heard more than their fair share of like hair raising like concerning stories from rhiannon mm -hmm. um who i think it's one of rhiannon's favorite subjects mm -hmm. and so i think you know alex i think alex just like takes a moment and like because also look like alex is emotionally aware enough to sense that like probably some kind of like emotional moment is going to happen 
in the privacy that that absence will lend. So like, you know what? I'm just going to like take an extra five minutes. <laughs> and so, yeah, I think they just like settle down on like, you know, a tree trunk or whatever and just like wait for 10 minutes and just like listen to the sound of the wood, which has become very familiar over the last like half hour to hear like, are there any stutters in it? Are there any echoes in it? Like, there is some very specific language that I think Rhiannon uses to characterize, like, Crinwin mimicry and the way that it relates to, like, the natural sound of, like, the woods. Mm. And so, yeah, I think they're just, like... Off. Yeah, like, the kinds of ways it is off. Because it's never just, like, oh, like, the Crinwin create a whole new soundscape, right? Like... Mm there is always a, re- a specific relationship to the soundscape that already exists. <clears throat> and so yeah, I think they're just like, they're just listening out for what's going on. And I think um, I would like to uh, discern realities. Yeah, that seems reasonable. See if there are some realities to be discerned. This is also just me being proactive because I know we're going to have to watch out for them anyway. So, so that is a 10 plus. All right, cool. Nice. You get your three questions. I have my three questions. Jeremy, what should I be on the lookout for? You're doing your like kind of zen, you, like, like listen to the sound of the forest type of thing. Alex tries to spoof the Crinwin by like, they imitate the noise of a, of a Ligosi bird they used to hear a lot growing up. Because if they hear that back, like <laughs> they sure as fuck on any like crimson Ligosi coast cardinals or whatever the hell this bird is called in sure. the great wood. Okay, that's delightful. Uh, so you, you, you're you sort of like doing your little bird call. You're, you're it's not door. a good bird call, I want to be clear. <laughs> it is like- You're doing a poor rendition of a bird call. It doesn't sound yeah. anything like a real bird. <laughs> it also doesn't sound anything like a real bird in the great wood, so it'll do. But you're not hearing anything off, right? Like you're not hearing your sound coming back to you. You're not- uh, um, uh, what you might call it, uh, uh, like you're not letting like like registering anything out of the normal soundscape. The the rush of the stream is pretty loud. Mm. Um, but the other thing about that is that the ground here is also quite damp. And as you're you know maybe getting ready to get like okay well it's worth trying but you know nothing's happening and probably should get back to the to to the to the others you like kind of shift and get ready and like you know like and in, in kind of getting up you're like oh and there in the mud like still with some water sitting in it is a three-toed like a big fucking three-toed or four-toed uh uh footprint mm, don't like this <clears throat> Don't like this at all. Um, Jeremy, what here is useful or valuable to me? That stream would probably be uh, a a useful deterrent, right? As far as uh, getting across, like if you could get across it, that would likely, if if nothing else, get you out of this thing's territory. And how far away is the stream? Are we talking like yards? Are we talking tens of yards? Are we like... Uh, from where you are, probably like tens of yards, right? What is about to happen? Nothing good. <laughs> I have I have spoken darkness into being with this question. <laughs> you know how this works. Yeah, I know how this works. <clears throat> but I prefer the soft move that I have invited than the hard move that comes without warning. As you are are like kind of looking around, like like having that 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 sinking pit feeling uh, in your stomach, you like catch a, a like a burst of sound uh, coming from like you know back behind you, and you're like oh fuck here it comes, and then a deer comes like pouncing through the uh, the brush oh, no. running towards you and then it's fall and then you're like oh and then you're like oh I've seen big shit before yeah you've seen big shit before but the ferocity yeah. behind this thing the proportion of head and jaws to uh, 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 like to the rest of its body and the fact that you were just like where the fuck did that thing come from 
um, it must have just been lying there in wait for for uh, for it to come through, and it's just like, <laughs> and and the deer is just like it's just a mess, right? And and there's a little bit of flailing, and it does the whole like worrying the death thing. rattle, the death shake yeah. thing, yeah, and um, like and then it drops it. it, well, it drops most of it, um, <clears throat> Some of and. And like, kind of, as that that's happening, like your fight or flight instinct is like, the freeze Ooh. instinct is now like stopping, and you're like, oh, um, it hasn't noticed you, yeah, yet, yet, but you're like, okay, that's a Sindar egg. Yep, it sure is. And what did this is a bit where I'm like, what did? Um... What did Corinna tell us about them yesterday? She uh, was like, she said, they don't hunt people. Mm -hmm. But they will attack, they have been known to attack the shit out of them. Alex just like stays standing there as they just like toss up. They're like, go to the river and like swim back to the others and like warn them or like play dead. Like, if they don't think of people as, like, food, that might genuinely be the safest thing to do. Quick cut back to the stream. Yeah. Your conversation is sort of, like, petered out awkwardly. And you know, there's this, like, crunch, crunch sort of noise that you hear coming from behind you, like, just barely over the uh, the, the, the sound of the, 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 uh, the rushing uh, stream. You're like, did, did you hear something? I think Karina says, be on your guard and like kind of mm. stands up as like grabbing for her shield and like looking around and trying to figure out if something's going on. Like she's just, she heard something and she spent all yesterday like on guard for the mm -hmm. Sindare. And I think Karadok is, is like sort of like, like, like the same noise, right? Mm -hmm. Is like, like staring off into the, uh, the brush kind of the general direction that Alex went. Like, I have a plan. <laughs> Let no one say it is a good plan, but it is a plan. <laughs> Alex, before you go, I just want to know, like, Karina, are you doing anything right now? Or are you just sort of like on guard? And You could prepare to defend Eilwen. Defend is basically like t getting ready to, in case something attacks. And like taking yes. up a defensive pos position. Um, yeah, if you want to do that, go for it. Uh, that's going to be rolling con. One and a four. All right. Mark XP. It's going to go awesome uh, for me. I'm going to put a pin in that because I'm not entirely sure what to do with it right now. Island at a high level. Did, was there anything that you wanted to do? Island is not a combat person nope. in any right. way. Uh, <laughs> she's looking around, but okay. she has no idea what being on your guard actually entails. <laughs> All right, so jump back to Alex then. Uh, you had a plan. We get this like long, terrible moment of them like looking at the cinder egg being like, like if it attacks me with my bare hands, what, like what is my best bet to survive? And I think they settle on like, if you can get behind the head and get like a grip on the neck such that you can steer it. Then like most of its like most of its weapons are in front of you and it can't like really do too much. And at that point you can try and like choke it out or snap its maybe not snap its neck, but like get a dagger in that. Like yeah. it starts to do the math of like, how would I, with really no weapons, like kill this thing? <laughs> and then they're like, this is an unproductive train of thought. <laughs> yep. Yeah. And so I think they just like reach down and like from their belt just like untangle uh, a sling. Mm, and just like okay. again like very very slowly just like reach down and like grab a rock like fit it into the little sling basket and just like basically like sling like a rock like as far as they can at a kind of like 90 degree angle from both them and the cinder egg in the direction away from where the camp is very cool okay smart Good. as soon as it like takes the bait which like I cannot imagine this hyper aggressive predator is not going to hear rustling in the bushes and like, nah, like go after yeah. it. I think yeah. Alex's plan is just to like get in the water like 
as quickly but quietly as possible. I think we're going to handle this as a defined danger. I think I'm leaning towards Int for a clever plan. I'm not great at that, but it works for me. All right. <laughs> uh, you do have advantage. It's advantage. Because yeah, sure, you're trying to get to the river, right? Well, that's a 12. Oh, nice. OK. Uh, thank you, advantage. Nice. <laughs> let me let me just quick describe what, uh, its re reaction, yeah. right? Like it gets really low, like like its head gets really low, and just like the nostrils flare. Um, but it's definitely like like staring in that moment, and just like <sighs> guarding its it, its meal. Um, but you've got that like it's definitely focused that way, so you are able to like slip away and make it down into the down to the stream yeah alex spent a lot of their life like sneaking around in camps like in the dark murdering people and so like is quite aware that like one of like the easiest way to not be noticed by people is just like to walk at a like is not to like pink panther around but he's just like to walk at a steady pace <laughs> And like somehow has enough nerve to do that, despite the fact that it involves turning their back on this thing. <laughs> like they're just like, I, I will fucking hear it coming. Like if it decides to run at me, and they just start like walking towards the river. I love it. I get, I'm picturing it that you are, I guess, upstream of it. So if you wanted to get into the river you could but honestly you'd probably be about as well off just sort of like hanging to the 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 mm. near edge um because you'd be basically out of line of sight of the thing and like the river's going to be making enough noise that it's not going to hear you there's enough in alex's pack that they'd like to keep dry that they just like yeah get get down there and start like inching along right like okay and it'll like it'll take as long as it'll take i think is very much the energy of this like <clears throat> They're not going to be rushed because that's what makes noise. Speaking of making noise, Karina, what do you end up doing that makes a god awful racket? Karina is so on edge that she actually like is not paying close enough attention to where she's putting her feet and she turns around, trips over the dog and smashes her gong of a shield against a rock. And it's like ringing a fucking bell. <laughs> Ta -da. that's fucking beautiful um all right so quick cut back to alex like hand over handing it like up against the 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 the, the ledge of this, this this area uh and then there's just this like <laughs> cutting over the, yeah. uh, the, the the thing and we just see um, them like close their eyes and like sigh and then with no more thought to like oh i have to be slow about this or i'll make too much noise they just like double their pace and start okay. coming along the back i'll win you like 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 it's really loud where you are right but like as you're kind of like looking at this the, like you know, you start to realize, like, there's something coming, like, through the woods. <clears throat> something big? What do you do? Alex is off doing Alex's thing, and obviously, <laughs> Karina can't, you know, keep her feet or something. I don't know. Um, and there's there's really only one like protective weapon I guess I have right. <laughs> I would point out I do want to remind you that you do have work with what you got. Uh, yeah I know and I and was what going you to got use is my weapon with, yes and to, right, to, right. like to set some deadfall or trees on fire. There's definitely trees. Uh, right. There's couple of big ones not too far from where you are like like big willow ones like, like, like kind of like massive willow trees with big. lots of flammable whippy things <laughs> that's true um mm -hmm. yeah like you could definitely light one of those things off and you mentioned the stream was sufficient to perhaps deter it at the very least it would slow some slow the thing down I'm right. um, here. Let me actually, uh, if you guys, 
on a quick look. So we've got a fallen Karina, a Eilwyn there, and then uh, I, I don't have the fig handy, but uh, Luke will say, yeah, you're like right around there-ish. He is me. I'm camouflaged. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And... There we go. <laughs> so, thing is coming. It is like chunk, 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 chunk. And let's actually just to clarify scale here. It's more like that. Yeah, slightly yeah, taller right. than a person. All right. So, Eilwyn, you're kind of like yes. taking in the environment. What are you thinking about doing here? My current thought is distraction. I don't think she would go immediately for attack. So let talk as a group about lighting fire like starting fire because i think like we're coming at this from being used to just like flip a match right do we think that getting out naphtha and lighting it on fire is something that can be done in a matter of seconds or is it something that would take like a minute or more if she's got flint and steel or flint mm -hmm. and iron or something like that it is something that she could get done in probably 10, 20 seconds, maybe half a minute. Okay, cool. I think that will be cutting it extremely close. Oh, uh, I'm fully prepared for this to be a panicked, like, ah! <laughs> <laughs> so if, like, Eilwyn looks at Karina, and Karina is not about to run. So what is Karina doing? What does Karina want Karadoc to do? Well, I can tell you what Karina's doing, which is she scrambles to her feet, grabs up the shield, looks at Eilwen, and then pulls out her weapon and starts smacking it against the shield to like continue being a loud, annoying gong and starts Just kind of trying it. to lure the big scary monster towards her and not towards Eilwen. Cool. So are um, you like advancing towards it? No, she's kind of trying to like play, look at me, look at me and trying right, to like- I'm in your yeah. house. Yeah. I'm in yeah. your house. <laughs> Fuck you, I'm in your house. <laughs> <laughs> cool. And what do you want Caradoc to do? Well, I think she tells Caradoc to guard Eilwen. You are, however, going to have to roll Caradoc's loyalty because your, its instinct is to protect you. He well, like kind of like reluctantly like comes over to the kid who's like rummaging in their sack and trying to to get Flint and Tinder out. Yeah, he's just like, mm, I don't like it. All right, and then and to be clear, you're like, kern, 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 kern. yes. A hundred percent. What weapon do you have? Is it a spear or a maul or something? Or I kind of like the idea of her having a maul. A maul. Okay. Hey, That's... I told you this woman is built like she can pull the plow herself. Okay. Yeah, that that that, that <laughs> is fucking delightful. All right. So you've got a sledgehammer, basically. That you're like beating against a gong. So yeah, as the thing like comes like, and it's like, it's moving quickly now. Like, especially as you start like hammering on the gong. Um, It seems to me like you are basically trying to defend Eilwen again, like taking that position and trying to draw all attention to yourself. Yeah. So I, uh, I think you're rolling plus con again to do the defend move. I got an eight. And I'm sorry, you, you have a shield, right? Correct. Mm -hmm. So you hold two readiness. Hey, hey. It, it sounds like you are definitely going to do the thing where you uh, draw, all attention. draw all attention from your ward to yourself. Correct. This ahead, basically yeah. means Eilwyn is free to act, but you do have a fucking Sindare like, coming at you. So before we get to it, like, dealing with you, I'll win. I would like you to defy danger with something to get <laughs> this lit before the thing gets here. It's basically a dex move. Okay, cool. Then... Which isn't a great stat for me, but, you know, it is in fact nothing, so... Well... And that's a nine. Do you have enough XP to burn, right? I and do not. Do okay. You're going to get it lit basically right as it gets to Karina. And so she's going to have to like deal with this thing, at least temporarily. Meanwhile, Alex, I assume you are, are you st still hand over handing it or have you jumped in the water? No, I think they are hand over handing it uh, because there is, there is one very important thing in their pack uh, that I think they are determined to keep dry. The Bandus Root Candle. 
which like mm. that's all we get all year so like really don't right. fuck that one up as this is happening you're kind of like getting around to the edge of that 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 curve right there that works for me karina you have yeah. a giant cave of a mouth filled with teeth up there with all the bad things you've ever dreamt about and it's just like it's like like open and coming at you what do you do anger is a gift comes into play here because yeah. when you burn with righteous anger see fear and anger on the back of playbook holds to resolve and i definitely feel like this plays into her fear of she's just not cut out for this shit um it's your anger. It it's not violence to children perhaps <laughs> I don't know. I, I do think it's a good question. Like, do you consider Eilwyn a child? Her whole objection to bringing Eilwyn on this trip was that Eilwyn is a child and not prepared for it. Sure. That move says, when you burn with righteous anger, hold two resolve. You can spend your resolve one for one, two. I'm probably going to ask you to spend one of those on setting aside fear and doubt to do what must be done, because this thing is just fucking terrifying. That makes perfect sense. Like, um, if you didn't spend it on that, I would probably make you defy danger with whiz to keep your shit together. Okay. So I spend one to set aside fear and doubt to do what must be done. How does spending readiness work? You can still attack back at this thing as long as you kind of maintain a defensive position. So like if you rush out and charge at it, you're going to lose your readiness. She's not going to be able to fucking kill this thing, but she could rattle it real hard and like catch it off guard for a few moments and she has a noisy shield and a hammer that can act like a loud bell what i was thinking of doing is set aside fear and doubt and then probably act suddenly catching them off guard i guess to try to get in close enough to like be able to ring the shield either against its head or right by its ear like Give it a concussion. Correct me if I'm wrong, but you're basically trying to like stop its attack by just making a huge amount of noise right as it's getting close to you. She also wants to do it in proximity to its skull. So like the noise and the vibrations kind of concuss it. It's about rattling its brain, not about like cutting its flesh or like... And I wait to the last possible second and sort of faint to the side and try to like turn as it as it moves sure. past me to do the move against the side of its head and even Perfect. like use the shield to help like redirect its head as part of the turn which yeah, puts the shield in contact with its head anyway so that then all you have to do is like <laughs> ring the bell cool. this is my scariest possible toro move right it's sick <laughs> as hell i totally like it so the the spending the the resolve to like act at the last minute that'll basically get you out of the way of the attack Okay. And then, then ringing the bell is, I think, honestly, strength probably makes the most sense. Oh, hell yes. That's a 10. Nice. So, yeah, it basically works exactly as you could have hoped, right? So you, like, duck to the side. Bang! And the jaws of the thing just, like, <laughs> down on nothing because you, you managed to dodge out of the way. There's the big kerng, and it just like jerks away from you. And uh, it's like, oh, Eilwyn, like that kind of happens, like, and it twists aside in your general direction, like right as you're getting the flames lit. What do you do? Uh, run. (laughs) Sorry, to be clear, it's not like coming at you. I'm just saying that it like twisted its head in your general direction. Sure. It's huge. It's terrifying. Oh, right, I right. got my thing done. I'm out. Okay. <laughs> so where are you running to? Uh, we're supposed to cross the river, right? That's where I'm going to go. Okay. <laughs> Which you do is have an ex- something. explosive, like lit explosive in your hand. Which I'm hucking at some stand of trees that is not in that direction. So like these trees I mean, right here? I can't throw very far, but yes. <laughs> That's right. We established can't this throw. This is canonical. Terrible yes. throwing on. <laughs> so basically just like light this tree on fire right yeah. here. Um, and, you know, book it the other direction. Cool. I think you got to roll where we're good to go. Okay. But before you do, tell us which of the effects you're going after primarily here. The big one I'm going with is impede or interrupt their actions because I don't want it following us. Yep. So go ahead and roll it. I rolled a nine. I have a plus two. That's an 11. Nice. So it will definitely like 
freak the thing out once it recovers from its head trauma. What second area? I think the area? one that makes the most sense is giving Karina an advantage on the next action to exploit the distraction. Does it have to be Karina? Because I might have a play here. It's basically like whoever. The next ends person. Up. Yeah. 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 You toss the flames in the tree and then you'd like turn and run and start trying to get across the river. Yep. I'm out. Peace. All right. <laughs> Fuck this shit. I'm out. So at the risk of keeping the spotlight on Eilwyn too long, Mm. I will say as you like jump into the water, you have a moment of, oh fuck, I don't know how to swim. And this is way heavier current than I have ever encountered. Mm -hmm. What do you do when you realize that? At the risk of being slightly too knowledgeable, fan out as, as much as she can to attempt to like basically dead man's float. I think using that as a defined danger with, I could see it either being con or honestly int makes the most Mm -hmm. sense for just like. That's not a gritting through it. That's a, oh, I'm being clever because maybe she read something about this. I'm going to just point out as someone who cannot swim very well. You're not thinking, no. And honestly, like I'm banking on Eilwyn being unnaturally intelligent in this situation. Sure. Like multiple standard deviations. Having jumped into cold water, even as someone who can swim, like you forget what's going on for a few minutes. Uh, Anyhow, what am I rolling? You're rolling (laughs) defy danger with it. Yes. Uh, I rolled a six. I have plus two. That's an eight. Oh, I know exactly what's going to happen. You're going to mark weakened because like we said, you just like jumped into very Mm -hmm. cold water. Makes sense. I assigned my dog to guard Eilwen. Oh, that's true. This is like a medium-sized dog, right? It is. And Eilwen is a tiny, tiny person. Yeah, I think the dog is basically like dog paddling up to Eilwen and trying to like drag her off the rock. But there is also a lot of current and Eilwen is kind of freaking out on that rock right now. (laughs) Alex, you're going to see Eilwen basically like getting ready to jump in the river. I think this is one of those moments where, like, rational brain says, great, cross the river, everything's fine. But, like, Mm -hmm. the tactician in Alex, like, they look at the thing and they're like, oh, look, a weakness. Like, here is a fight that isn't done, right? And, like, we don't leave enemies behind to stab us in the back. I think they're going to run up to, like, here, Mm -hmm. pulling a torch out of their pack. And they're going to light the torch, like, drag the torch through the flames of the tree and then just, like, shove it into the things like nose and eyes and like face as they okay. uh, say a prayer to Helior. <laughs> and I'm going to do an invocation, Jeremy. I'm cool with all this. Yep. However, just thinking through the time frame here, Karina is, is absolutely time. like in the water before. Oh uh, yeah, like, no, for sure. So Karina, what, what are you doing? You've got a maul and you've got a bronze shield. I don't care how strong you are with those two things on you, you're not going to be able to wade or swim through this water. I just want to review a couple things to make sure I, I have the situation straight first. We confirmed that Karina knows where Gorlas has set his traps before, right? Mm-hmm. And she's journeyed in this area before hunting. Mm-hmm. So because she's not a total dumbass in all things, she would have like planned for how she was going to get across so i feel like she would have tried to take them to an area where she felt like she could safely get across without worrying that she was going to drown or have to abandon her weapons so what i'm going to say is that spot is basically here basically it's like a ford where like submerged rocks are close enough to the surface that you can like step on them there's a lot of churn and rapid as a result of that Got it. Okay. I mean, that's really probably only like five to 10 feet. The worst case scenario, like Karina could probably make a running jump over that. So like thinking through where her head is at at the moment, I mm-hmm. think it, it's definitely more, oh shit, big lizard, run, run, run. And perhaps not as tactical as she could be. So yeah, I do think she just does a fucking running jump and tries to get across. This is the definition of defying danger with strength. Okay, so that is a nine. I'm just going to go with the obvious thing. You're going to land hard and you're going to take some damage. I don't think this is bone breaking bad. So just take a D6 of damage. If my move, I get knocked down, applies here? You certainly can. You can't take one that is already happening, right? So like, 
you can't take I fall down. So Uh, I feel like what happens is she probably does like a running jump, manages barely to like kind of roll. So instead of twisting her ankle or what the fuck ever, she now concusses herself the way that she kind of concussed this lizard a second ago and is just like real fucking out of it for a hot second. Actually, could I make a suggestion? Sure. Face full of fucking sand. Oh, God. Sure. Right. So roll the damage, but then have it. Uh, oh, yeah. So I got a five. Numbers round, so that'd be three. Okay. Um, but yeah, that's better than five. All right. Alex. I would like yeah. to consecrate a flame to Heliod and invoke the sun god. Like, honestly, like, I am jamming a flaming torch in the face of this thing. The torch mm-hmm. is not the consecrated flame. The burning tree is the consecrated flame. <laughs> the, anything that is on fire is a valid right. target the rules do not yep. say i must light the fire no no absolutely i <laughs> also have written a prayer to heal you if the congregation would like to hear it i would love to hear it Daybringer, half keeper winter's wife you who bore light from within the black gates and left still flush with life who dance light-footed on the waves at dusk who praise the sun in joyous song each dawn Mother of Lygos, beacon of hope, deliver us from strife and bloody violence. I love it. And the invocation that I am using is Terrible as the Dawn. And the type of mortal creature that I would like to name is Rage Drakes. (laughs) That's great. Please roll to invoke the sun god. And of course, because I am taking advantage of an opening left by my dear friend Eilwyn, namely a big fire that I could consecrate, I believe I have an advantage on this. Absolutely. Uh, that is a nine. So what do you choose? This is a bit where I'm like, I have to, you know, I have to make some like aesthetic choices here. Cause like the light is snuffed out when the invocation is completed, it's still consumed is like, it, it's too blatantly it's like a magic is happening. I think we get a mock ability. Yeah, which one did you mark? I marked miserable. Ah. I just think like in the run over like, you know, in the adrenaline, Alex doesn't notice it, but afterwards they realize they like pulled a mu- like they pulled a muscle. Nothing like ongoing nagging pain. Yeah, to put you in a good yeah. mood. What's the reduced effect? Oh, great question. Uh, <laughs> All mortal creatures, but you are affected, including your allies. Whoops. Yeah, you know what? We're gonna go with that one because Kareem is basically out of it at this point, right? Mm. <clears throat> like face full of sand. I'll win. I want to know what you see when this happens. You get to describe what you perceive and why it fills you with soul-sucking fear. I mean, I think half of it is she's clinging to this rock in the middle of a deeper-than-she-thought river, which is already terrifying, and looks over her shoulder and sees her friend just this ginormous hulking person silhouetted by a raging fire and fighting this like fucking enormous lizard thing which is just not a great and comforting picture to see the other half of it though i kind of wonder if she's seeing some of this through the staff I'm just loving the Fine. idea of like Eilwyn getting dragged under by the current and the, the stick like <laughs> right like and a she's periscope. like <laughs> yeah she's like periscoping with this thing I don't think she's doing it intentionally mm-hmm. like I don't think she's intentionally trying to see through the staff but I think it's sort of like echoing there and she's getting this like sense of the the situation that is not entirely visible she's feeling this invocation on its vaguely magical level, even though it wouldn't appear as such. Kind of like cutting through here, right? The Sindara fucks right off. Not like it was already feeling put out by the fire and getting Mm. gonged in the ear. And that extra bit, it's just like, and like you have basically just claimed this territory from it. Yeah, I was going to say, Jeremy, is that like, is there something I can roll or whatever to like, to make a personal impression on this registry. <laughs> oh no, you don't have to roll it. It's, oh great, it's a- yeah. Alex is swinging a torch around like a club with fire on mm-hmm. it. So I think yeah. there is probably like a, you know, a terrible like burn across the face of this rage drake. 
<laughs> but, it will, but it will bear forever after and like remember remember this day fucking metal so yeah there's a extremely dramatic pyrotechnic effect and a scar across its nose and it just like and, and goes like chunk, 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 off into the brush yeah and so uh, i think alex just like turns yeah turns on their heel tosses the torch down in the water to put it out and like goes over to where Eilwyn is and I think probably by the time that's done happening, like Karina, you've come through yeah. enough, like gotten to enough that you can like- Karina missed that whole thing. She has no yeah. idea what happened. I think you're looking back, looking up, clearing your eyes to see Alex like- <laughs> 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 But Eilwyn is still like clinging like a, a drowning rat to the to the rock. There's no real uh, stakes or, or, or tension on this. You can get her, you can save her, but just tell me how you go about doing so. Karina puts down her heavy weapons and sort of like staggers down to the edge of the water and just goes wading in. I think she's probably able to just go and like physically get Eilwen and tow her back to the shore. Alex collects the dog. So yeah, you're all waterlogged and sitting on a little sand beach with a tree still blazing merrily away. Eilwen coughing up water and, and whatnot. Roll today. Karina manages to successfully haul Eilwen in. And then I, what I'm picturing happens is Eilwen sort of flops over on the beach. And then I think Karina kind of like flops onto her back next to Eilwen. <laughs> it's just, they both kind of just lay there for a second. <laughs> yeah. Ugh, just like, ugh. <laughs> Sharing a moment of being like, well, that sucked. I think Alex puts the dog down and then like slumps down against the rock just like wince, wincing slightly and like probing something in their chest. And then Karina sits up and is like, so what, how, I kind of missed what happened after I jumped across the river. Turns out uh, Rage Rakes, like most uh, big animals, still don't like bunch of fire in the nose eyes area next nice, nice going and quick thinking this one is directed at Eilwen. Mm. um you did good doing okay there i just i i felt kind of useless um, there's not much i i don't know you both have done this before I don't know. What I think I'm... Alex looks at Corinna. Like, do you want to take this? <laughs> like, do you want to be the <laughs> give the pep talk here or should I? Right. <laughs> Karina lets out kind of a like a, a a little like soft laugh and says, I don't think that there's a single hunter in town who has seen one of those before. And there's a lot of them that wouldn't have been able to think, think as quick as to get some nap out and get a fire going. So you did good. And well, you wouldn't have had to do it in the first place if I hadn't gone and rang a bell to tell it where we, we were. What do I do in the future? I've only got two of those left. You mean the next time we see one of those things or? <laughs> I mean, the next, the next time we hit danger. I'd... You both are fighters. And Alex kind of like hand gesture like, mm, like. <laughs> I, I saw you though, you were a against the fire. I you hit it. I shoved the torch in its face like any, anyone could. There's plenty that quick wits can do, even if you don't have a weapon in your hand. Most things need eyes to fight. Throw sand. Most things don't like it if logs fall on them. Don't like getting stuck between rocks. Fight dirty. <laughs> the, the great wood, and I think they laugh. The great wood is dangerous enough for us to move through. So, no reason we can't turn that against anything trying to hurt us. You think, 
fast on your feet. And that's a useful skill. So if we run into trouble again, you should do that. But if you want to practice some time, so you know how to defend yourself in other ways, we can work on that. I can show you some things. I just, I know you didn't want to bring me along out here and I, I don't want to make that harder on you. I think this is another moment where Karina says something socially unacceptable under her breath in Ligosi. <laughs> <laughs> Alex, Alex lets out like a shocked little laugh. <laughs> then she just says, if you hadn't been here, I might be in that thing's belly. I'm glad I could help. So you start like heading out of this valley and the, um, like the, the, the ground is sort of, you know, sloping continually gradually but 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 steadily upward and this is definitely like the ex the furthest extent really of where um where gorlas would typically like would be leading leaving his traps you find one of gorlas's snares or rather you find what used to be one of his snares like you're not sure with what uh, but something cut or tore it off really, really roughly. And you find a couple of these sort of like all throughout the area in different and varying states of disrepair. I think Alex would just like quickly examine the like the spot where the snare is broken because yeah. like not to get into the details, but there are differences in the things that Claws versus blades versus brute force due yeah. to objects when yeah. they oh. rupture them. Yep. Uh, and Alex is like... somewhat of an expert in these differences. Uh, why don't you roll discern realities for me? Would anyone like to aid me as I, I discern Karina these would. realities? We have a little like a little forum over like <laughs> you know alex kind of like pokes it with their foot and is like like how strong is this kind of twine like what kind of animal yeah. do you reckon you could hold with that? yeah exactly all right so you're rolling and i'm aiding uh jeremy is this advantage or does this uh, expand the scope the way you're describing it definitely yeah. sounds like advantage hell yeah all right I all right five and a one i got a four five and a four is nine and i have wisdom plus one nice. ten nice. plus so what happened here recently? Yeah, what and, happened here recently? You know, Karina, what it makes you think of is um, some of the weapons of the forest folk. Not the forest folk, the, um, the hill folk. There's still a, a, a long tradition of uh, flint mapping among the hill folk. And okay. you're like, this looks like some of the, 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 the older, cruder, stuff like a uh, uh, rock with th that's just sort of been like like scraped down to a point that's what it's making you think of like someone with a with a a sharp ish rock chopped through something hmm. alex you spot the um like the gouges in the sapling like like from yeah where it was point. held against it to like yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. jeremy i would like to ask who or what uh was really in control here as a proxy for like this, this is Krenwin, right? Like primitive tool this use. Fucking Krenwin, yes. Okay. Yeah. Uh, what uh, should I be on the lookout for? Let me turn that question around to Karina. Karina, what is, aside from like changes in the noise of the forest and like, you know, actually hearing weird things, what is the surest sign of Krenwin nearby? You can um, usually smell them. And I think the way that that works is like if one of them scrapes against a tree branch or something, like something about their sweat or like their musk. When you've encountered them from time to time, mm -hmm. they've had these weird growths and like pustules on them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And like sometimes, like they're sometimes they they look like big zits about to pop, and sometimes mm -hmm. they're like they're already oozing. Mm -hmm. You're you're pretty sure that the smell comes from that. 
Yep. That sounds like a symbiotic relationship with a species of wasp that lays its <laughs> eggs inside Krenwin. Jeremy, Please. you're the one who put wasps and Krenwin next to each other on a starter. Like, this is all your <laughs> Yeah, this is all my fault. There's a smell to, to watch out for. Karina, you're pretty sure that, well, A, last time you were out this way, there were not Krenwin in this area. So, like, there must be a new nest that's moved in. Uh, and two, you also know that, like, Gorlis's last traps are basically at the foot of those hills that, okay. uh, you know, that, that, are, that are kind of up that way. So you've still got maybe like a half hour to an hour of travel before you get to them. Okay. Um, and then it'll be getting very close to night by the time that, that uh, you get there. What are you going to do, if anything, to sort of like be on the lookout for or, or avoid Krenwin? I have an idea, but it's going to suck. All right. I think Alex, Alex like uh, offers to like, carry Eilwen on their back uh-huh. so that Eilwen doesn't have to worry about where she's putting her feet so that she can just watch the trees. And you know what Eilwen's going to do if you tell her to just keep a lookout. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yep. I sure do. Oh, God. So everyone will know what you've done. Oh, oi, snare! Did you work? I'm afraid not. So sorry. I'm really not. That was beautiful. Not at all. That was like genuinely. <laughs> what a gift.